catfish and spaghetti. The great debate, right? Um, so basically, depending on what region you grew up in, what part of the country, um, this is pretty common to you. To others who did not grow up with this meal, it is very uncommon and is hella debatable for people. Um, my family is from Mississippi. I have family in Georgia. I have family in uh, New Orleans. My family that's from the South definitely know this meal. My Midwest family definitely know this meal. Uh, family that's in Louisiana, not so much. Um, however, they even eat things that, let's say, I don't eat. They make their stuffed peppers with seafood and all of that, and they don't use a tomato uh, base. And they use breadcrumbs. I think it's blasphemy to make um, stuffed peppers and not have a tomato, tomato sauce, a base to it. But it all depends on where you grew up. So... Let's chop it up, let's cook it up, let's talk about it. I'll give you the origin of catfish and spaghetti and we can go from there. I'm gonna start with rinsing off my catfish and putting it to the side. I got four nice size catfish fillets from Jewel Osco up here. Um, the store that I absolutely love, these were not on sale, but I, I don't care because I just, when I want some catfish, I want it. So I'm gonna rinse and get these trimmed up, but I just wanted you guys to get a good look. All right, I usually start off by sauteing me some yellow or white onion, some bell pepper, green, yellow. I, I do do uh, red sometimes as well. You wanna start off with that. For me, you all, there is a big difference and the flavor of a yellow onion and the flavor of a red onion. I've explained that to y'all before. Uh, red onion or purple onion, whatever you want to call it. I mostly use that in salads or relishes. When it comes to cooking it, I don't really use it because it's too sweet for my liking. I love the flavor of a yellow or a white onion when you're making like a savory, savory dish. So start there, let that cook up. Then you'll start cooking up your meat. I have water already over here boiling for the pasta. The grease I'll turn on when I'm ready to actually start. All right, so the meat is in here. The meat is almost done cooking. This is Italian sausage. My spaghetti is more uh, on a spicy, kind of a spicier side, and very, very savory. This, uh, for me, when I season, I usually wait until my meat it's cooked down completely through before I season because I just feel like you season at the beginning when it's cooking and then you gotta run that grease off of there and all your seasonings be running off with it. I just wait until all my meat is done cooking down and then I season, season, season. So this is brown, Italian sausage, green peppers, yellow peppers, onions, and I typically throw in red peppers. I didn't have any. Garlic will also be added, but it'll be added once this is kind of cooked all the way down. I don't want my garlic to burn. So you know you got your traditional garlic powder, onion powder. And folks, just salt and pepper, garlic powder, onion powder. I love garlic, and I did add a garlic paste in here before. Onion powder. Italian seasoning and, and lots of it and I'm gonna use even more when I start mixing all the tomato sauce and all that together <clears throat> I put a little oregano which is included already in the Italian seasoning but I like to see it all up into my food I'm gonna use a little rosemary Bit. And I use red pepper flakes. 
again, my spaghetti is more of a spicier spaghetti. Some classico. This is the spicy tomato and basil. I am, I, I'm a little funny about my spaghetti sauces. I ain't gonna lie to you. Now, I can season up and doctor up any sauce to make it taste what I need it to taste like. But the one sauce that I just, I can't do nothing with is where I do. I don't, I just can't do that. Not me. And yes, I, I added some water. We're gonna get up all this sauce up out of here. Well, mine is splurging, but it ain't nothing wrong with being frugal, you hear me? So, I'm gonna keep adding that. I have another couple jars over here. I am also gonna use the Italian sausage flavor one. Then, I also add diced tomatoes to my sauce. It's, it has the basil, garlic, and oregano. It gives it such a good flavor. So I will bring all that together, come back, we'll incorporate, mix our spaghetti, pasta up with that, get that all in one pot, and then we're gonna get to frying this fish and hearing a little bit about how I grew up understanding the origin of catfish. Not to make it sweet. Time to take a little break. Gotta wear my whistle. Love, love, love all of they wine. Okay, now while the pasta is getting good and al dente, I'm gonna go ahead and get our batter. Put, put your catfish into a bag, or if you want, you can just put it in a little um, glass dish or whatever you can to batter your stuff up. Now, I do buy Andy's brand. I also buy Louisiana, like uh, the New Orleans brand. And I also buy Zatarain's fish fry sometimes. Um, this one is near and dear to me because it's the one my grandfather used to use all the time. And it is seasoned up pretty well. It's really no need to add anything extra or your fish is gonna to be too salty. This is the Andes Red. They have a yellow, they have a Cajun style, they have chicken batter. And you can always make your own, of course, uh, get you some meal, a little flour, season it up however you want. But because it's so good, I'd rather just eliminate extra time and go on and throw it on in there. So get that in there, coat it well. You can see how the batter, let me see if I can open this up and show you. You can see how it's, it's a really pretty color. So that fish is gonna fry up right. So get that done and out the way. And we're gonna head to this cast iron in a minute. So, I'm gonna talk to y'all a little minute while I'm transferring my meat sauce to the pasta. So, um, how I grew up kind of understanding how this dish was integrated together is that um, y'all gotta understand a lot of Italians and Greeks too settled in the uh, deep south. They settled in like the Mississippi area, Louisiana area. And what happened is that you had a lot of black people who would work in their homes this was in the like late 1800s early 1900s so you may have a lot of blacks that were working in their restaurants or 
um, working in their homes or just patronizing a restaurant and they got accustomed to learning how to make spaghetti. So y'all know we put our own little razzle dazzle on things. So what happened is that they start incorporating the Italian dishes into our soul food dishes. We gonna, we gonna always fry up some fish. And so they just started doing fried fish and spaghetti. And then if you feeling real good, you throw you in some coleslaw. And, and my grandparents used to just eat it with butter bread. Now my mother, she ain't gonna eat this dish unless she has some garlic bread with it. I don't too much care. I don't, I, I don't, I wouldn't care if I had garlic bread or not any kind of bread with it. But I definitely um, grew up eating. My grandparents would make spaghetti catfish with a slice of bread and some butter on it. And that would be that. So that's kind of the origin of it and how it, um, how it came about that we, especially in the Midwest, and especially down south, know about catfish and spaghetti. Most people in the Midwest, like Chicago where I am, families have came here from Mississippi and all of that. So we just adopted it and that's how you got the dish. Okay. It has all been transferred to one pot. I have re-seasoned. It is right good and meaty and it got a spicy kick to it. Garlicky but good and Italian seasonings and all of that. We got some more fish in here frying up. Look how, ooh, that look good down there. And y'all know what I'm already saying. I tell y'all in everything, every video about that cooling rack. <laughs> look how they look. That fish is gonna stay nice and crunchy. I'm gonna fry a couple pieces a little extra hard for the, the people that like it on the harder side. I don't like my fish fries that hard. Mm.